going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to work on the Lowrider ST again and this is going to be a big one. So I've had the thrashing bars and risers and gauge relocation and stuff for a while but just haven't had the time to do it. So finally we're going to take the day to do it. We've got a bunch of rain happening right now so I can't go out and go ride which has always been my excuse why I haven't done it. But um, we're going to get that done today. So. What that consists of is nine and a half inch pullback risers, the uh, high bend bars. Some people use mid bend. I use Thrashen's little measurement thing on their site, which was pretty cool. Thanks for doing that, guys. And uh, it gave me the best riding position for those bars, which turned out to be the high bends. And so I've got those. And then we're gonna do the gauge relocation by adding a speedo up above the front up here and we've got all the cables from Gorilla Cables and different things. We're gonna need an extended clutch upper cable. We're gonna need a longer brake cable, which I've got those from Harley. We're gonna need an angled uh, connector for the bottom down there where it hits to the block for the brakes, because uh, we have to change that out. And uh, let's see what else. Um, We've got some new levers I'm going to put on it since I have everything taken apart and of course some new grips, some really cool grips that I'll show you in a couple minutes. And it uh, should be pretty interesting. I'm excited about it and uh, can't wait to get that riding position changed. What I found with this bike is although it's not bad, uh, I tend to be leaned over a little bit and a little bit lower and where the bars hit and the handles, they kind of go up and so it's kind of uncomfortable and I feel pressure up in my shoulder blades and my lower back after, I don't know, 40, 50 miles, you just start feeling a little uncomfortable. So I can't wait to get that back up. I did the same configuration on my Road Glide ST and I absolutely loved it. So I'm not concerned at all about how it's gonna turn out or what it's gonna look like. And uh, yeah, so I'm excited about that. So we'll get the camera turned around. Um, I'm gonna do a riding position, current riding position, the configuration that it is shot so you guys can see what I'm talking about, how it sits, and then when we're all done, we'll do another one and show the changes and how it sits after we put the risers and stuff on. So there's a lot of different videos on how people do this by jacking it up, by taking the tank off, not taking the tank off, uh, taking the fairing off, things like that. Personally, I'm gonna leave it on my rack. I'm not gonna jack it up, and I'm gonna take the tank off because I want easy access to this a wiring panel here that's got this little boot that's on the side and get everything out. We've got some cool things to put on there to make it really sexy and ride nice. So let me get the camera turned around. I'll show you the riding position and then we'll go through all the parts because there's a lot of them. And then uh, of course I'll have everything linked in my description so you guys can find them, what exactly I put on and uh, steps that we did it. So back in a minute. Okay, so we got it all turned around now so you can see all the parts. There's a lot of them. And I'm gonna grab this guy first just because it's off camera. This is the extended clutch cable that you're gonna need. You can get this from Harley. You got the part number right there, but again, I'm also going to put it in the description so you guys have part numbers and links where available for everything that I got. But uh, we'll start out you know, from this side here. So we've got the edge cut. Um, levers that I'm gonna put on there because I don't like the chrome ones that are on it. So I've got those to put on. We've got an extended brake cable that we have to put on that you can get at Harley. Again, I'll have that. There's this little 90 degree elbow adapter and we've got the part number here. And then I'll also put that in there for the link. We've got the good and tight bushings that are available on Thrash Insight. I've got a new four inch uh, combination speedometer, tachometer, the whole nine yards. Purchased this from Harley. So we'll have a link for that one in there too. We've got the extended control cables to give you about six inches on length. And then the new speedo harness cable. Also the links are available on Thrash and Sight. We've got the little adjuster swivel bracket for the gauge relocation. And that will connect in this stock clamp right here. If you're not doing the gauge relocation, then you will get the one that has the gauge here, and then the cable will plug in the back of that, and they explain that on their site in the videos as well. 
And then the Thrashin nine and a half inch pullback risers. Uh, very good product, I love them. One thing you need to know, it does not come with mounting hardware, that, so you can either use the existing ones, but I, I think it's kind of a cluster the way it goes together with a stud you have to thread in and then a nut that goes behind it and just ugly. So you're gonna get these new bolts that I got at Lowe's, uh, which on Thrashen site down the bottom where you look at the risers, they talk about does it come with hardware. And so they tell you the size you need. Very easy to find. I don't know, we'll say six bucks for all of it, right? So we got that. We've got uh, new perch clamps, very sexy, right? Thrashing and grave made in USA, all that good stuff. I've got my new ODI Vans grips that I'm putting on. The nice thing I like about these is there's a pressure clamp here and here that you put on and that holds it in place so you don't have to glue and mess with all that. And they look pretty sexy with the van shoe style. I like that. So we got those. And then we've got the high bend bars. Now some people like mid bends, some like high, some may like low. Thrashin has a cool little measuring scheme they have on there, on their site that you can look at. I suggest you look and try it. Uh, for me, the way my wrists sit, uh, it's the high bend bars, the same ones that I put on my Roguelite ST that were perfect. So make sure you do those when you pick your bars out. And then here is the gauge relocation kit with this cool, you know, new little mount that goes on there. I've already put the cable in there so you can see kind of how the extended cable lays. And it comes with all the hardware you need to mount it, nice little cover that goes on it. And I also purchased a gasket for it that I got from Harley, which again, I'll put the part number in there for that. And then there, and of course, instructions that go into it. And uh, yeah, that's about it for what we do and all the parts we need. Again, I'll have it all linked in there so you guys can figure out everything that's going on. But I'm real excited for this one. Uh, I've been wanting to do it for a while, like I said, and now we're gonna get it done, so. I'll get the camera turned around. We'll start getting things prepped to pull apart and uh, we'll get going. All right, see you in a minute. All right, so now that we've gone through the parts and you guys have seen kind of how my riding position is on this thing and what it looks like as we're figuring out how it's gonna change, what we're gonna do is start taking stuff off the bike and start getting ready, right? So. Next thing we gotta do is we're gonna take the tank off, right? So you got two bolts right here, and then a bolt or a bolt and a nut there, a bolt and a nut here, and then there's a vacuum hose and a quick disconnect fuel line, quick disconnect fuel line, fuel line. and then you also have a plug up underneath the tank. So I'm gonna just put a towel over the front of the tank to cover it, just so nothing happens to it while I'm getting that bolt loose. We're gonna leave the bolt in there, and then we're going to take this bottom one out and flip the tank up so we can disconnect this stuff over here. So, here we go. All right, so now you can see up here at the front of the bike by the tank, you've got this bolt that goes right through here. That's for the front mount of the tank. It's a 9 16th acorn nut and a 5 16th hex bit. So we're just gonna take the acorn nut off, but I'm gonna leave the bolt in it so I can use it to pivot the um, tank as I'm disconnecting everything. All right, then we're gonna do the same thing on the back side. Okay, now that we got the rear bolt off and the front bolt disconnected or the nut disconnected and holding it for a pivot point, the next thing we're gonna do is take off this side cover and disconnect the main fuse because we're gonna be disconnecting a bunch of wires and that kind of helps prevent any shorts and also any unnecessary trips when you start plugging and unplugging and everything else. If you're doing just a quick one, I generally don't do it, but in this case, I'm gonna do it. So as most of you probably know from this, this is a 530 seconds hex bit. Okay, once we have fuse panel, out and the fuse removed. 
We're gonna prop our tank up with a towel so we can get underneath here. And what you're looking for is the fuel disc quick disconnect, a vacuum line here, and a connector up here. This connector has a little depress on the top that you gotta push. And you're gonna need two hands to do that. And then we'll just take the tank off and put it over on the side on a table I got laid out so nothing happens to it and we'll continue on. All right, so now we've got a lot more room to work here. The boot that we have to get to is gonna be right here and I'll get in closer on it. All the wires connect up underneath this and you can see you've got these lines right here that come back. I'm probably gonna take these loose. There's a bolt up here in the front and one here, just so they come out so it's not pushing on this boot to make this boot a lot easier to get out. So let's take a look at doing that. All right, so this is a T27. So we're just gonna take these out. Now what that does is it frees this up, see? All right, so now these are nice and loose, and this boot right here will be able to come out nicely to get there. We'll get a close-up shot, and we're ready to do that. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect the upper clutch cable. So you've got this cable comes down here, it connects here to the bottom one. You've got a retaining clip right here that you gotta get off um, so that you can slide the cable up, so you just Pull that little guy off like that and then you slide up this boot and you can see you have the connection here right so the way to take the tension off the cable is you've got these two little red tabs and you just push those in and if you can't get them with your finger you can use it with a screwdriver pull it out like that and that will release all the tension off of the cable right and then you can see that so then we push it all the way down push that back in and now your cable is sloppy so that you can work on this little area right here to get the upper clutch cable disconnected so on the back side as you spin it around you've got a little connection right there and this little tab so you have to bend that little tab up with a screwdriver to release this ball right here so that it comes out, right? Pry this little guy up like that. You can see now that ball is loose. And then once you get it loose, you just try to get in there, probably push it out from the back side to push it forward to get it out like that. And then now that's loose, right? So now that, that's removed from there. So what that does is that frees up that cable to be pulled out so it's not connected to the lower side. And then we just go up and remove the spring clip and pull the cable out and disconnect it. So I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so now you got the cable loose at the bottom. You can see what it does here. Loosens this cable all up. There's a pin right here that you gotta get out and there's a snap ring on the bottom that you'll want to use one of these little snap ring tools uh, to get that out and then i suggest you loose, loosen your mirror up so that it moves out of the way so that pin can come up so we'll just unsnap that and get this pin out just like that and maybe a good idea to get some extra ones in case they get bent because sometimes they tend to do that and then all you do push your pin up pull your pin out like so, and this frees up this clutch cable for coming out. You can see here how it connects, right? And you got this little shim stopper in there. It goes in the top, and when you pull that out, it frees up your clutch cable, All right? So, and then now,
your upper clutch cable is free and ready to be pulled out. And because I disconnected that on the bottom already, it should just come right out. And there's your upper clutch cable removed. All right, so now that I got this disconnected, I'm gonna go ahead and move over and start working on the uh, boot to get the different wires disconnected from there so that we can free up uh, the risers. And then from there, we'll move on to the right-hand side and deal with the master cylinder. All right, so now that we've got that all done, you can see here's where I moved the bolts for those cables because we gotta get to this boot. And so this boot right here is tucked in and lipped around the frame. And these bundles here make it a little hard when you try to get it back in. So now we just gotta manipulate and pull those out so we can get to all those connections to do the extensions for the cables. So now with the little finagling, we got it out. You can see how they all kind of go and why I pulled those wires loose or those lines loose. But they all go to kind of go in this little boot right here. Move that up out of the way. You have an accessory plug right here that is for if you want heated grips, I guess. And then you've got your left turn signal, your right turn signal. You've got your gauge and your different sensors and all that stuff. So we have to take a look at what's got to come out and then we'll disconnect these so we can pull them all up through the neck. But before I do anything, I'm going to wrap this little accessory one with some blue tape, just so I know that I'm not going to use it. And I don't try to find out where that connection goes later when I'm trying to hook everything back together. So then we just start disconnecting and just push down the little tabs and pull them out. I didn't need to disconnect the ABS one, but I did just to get the wires free so I could get them out. So a lot easier for those connections. And then we just start fishing the wires coming up. All right, so now we got all the wires loose. Everything's down free from this boot. And then we can now work on getting the other side of the bars worked on. So back in a second. Okay, so now we're ready to start over on this side. Um, you've got the master cylinder and your brake lever and all that stuff. And you have to drain the master cylinder because we're gonna be disconnecting this brake line to put a longer one on, right? So first thing we gotta do is drain that out. And then we have to drain the brake line from the front calipers. So try to minimize as much mess as you can. Uh, I've put some towels all over the place, over the fender, over the front of the fairing, everything else, because dot four is very corrosive. Just extra caution, I'm putting that on there. But I'm gonna work right now on taking off this top cover and then draining this thing out. Uh, I loosened up everything a little bit to level this out because mine was tilted a little forward based on bar position. So I just wanted to have a nice level um, master cylinder as much as possible uh, to minimize any spillage. So we take out these top, top Phillips head screws and then carefully lift up the top of the master cylinder. You can see right there it's got a little plunger gasket in here. So we're going to grab both of those at the same time. Try to anyway. Okay, didn't get all of it. So we're gonna grab this little rubber insert. All right, so just to, again, be cautious that we don't spill any of it anywhere. And then we'll drain this thing out. Now, cool thing about that, there's a bunch of different ways that people do it. And I found this cool little air compressor adaptable suction bleeder. Uh, from four uncles and I'll put that in the description as well but it hooks up to my air compressor and then has this little siphon hose and then you just push like that and it creates a vacuum and sucks everything out it's got two different adapters one with this little 
sucker thing that we're going to do that and then one that fits over the bleed ports on your rotors and uh, so we're going to use this to drain this out and see how it works so basically get it connected to your air compressor and then have this thing connected there and hit it all right and just like that you can see the fluid in the bin and uh, suck this thing bone dry so really good job with that ops check good so then we'll change out the connection just by popping this out and then we'll go through and do the bleeds on the front calipers as well to try to minimize the mess from all this brake line fluid that we're going to have going on but first i'm going to put this cover back on so i don't get anything inside of it all right so no fluid in there now um, we're ready to go to the other ones now we'll drop down and do the bleed ports on the rotors and do both left and right All right, so now that we got those all drained out, pretty cool little tool, I think. Um, now we're going to disconnect all the stuff here from the bars. So we got the switch housing, which is T25 here and a T25 here in the front. I pulled those out already. The reason why you want to take those off is you're wanting to get to the lever. So same thing as with on the other side, you've got a pin that goes down here in the bottom with one of those little uh, spring clips on there and you pop that spring clip out and pull this pin and that frees up your brake lever now there's a switch here that you just got to kind of pay attention um, kind of where it goes and everything else for that right so we're just going to drop this all kind of down and those are the controls and there's my lever all right, so the lever goes in, switches in there like that, pushes against that switch right here, and that's what gives you that uh, break there in the front. So that's out the way now. And I'm taking those off because I'm changing levers, otherwise I just pull the whole assembly off, right? So you can see everything's kind of loose. And then if I drop this down, I've got my wires coming out and there's the controls. And so now I'm gonna take out the perch clamp bolts. Now the reason I'm doing this like this is because I'm not gonna disconnect this cable yet. I'm gonna just drop this whole assembly down. You don't have to do it this way. I'm just doing it this way because I'm doing multiple things. Now the master cylinder's loose, brake cable's still connected. Your switches are right here for all your cables and stuff like that that we're gonna be pulling out of the, out of the bar. Okay, and then now that I've got that done, I'm just gonna take my towel and wrap this up and move it, hang it down here until I'm ready to mess with that brake lever or brake cable. All right, so now that we got that loose, everything's loose. We've just got the cable sitting here. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen up the clamp and then um, that way we can get the bars off and then we can just deal with the risers. Quarter inch driver on this, hex bit. All right, once you get the bolts all loosed, just pull top clamp off and that comes out and then you can just lift your bars out and all the cables, just like that. So the other thing to note, if you were going to use the Thrashen updated clamp, then you would take this connector out, take this center piece out, and then put that in the new top clamp. We're not doing that, so I don't have to worry about it. Um, now where we're gonna focus on is getting, getting these risers out. And there's three quarter bolts down here or nuts in the, in the stock configuration. And then you've got your inserts here and here, which where the good and tights are gonna go in. So now we're gonna go in and take those nuts out of the bottom and see if we can get these risers to come out. All right, so I got my three quarter wrench. I'm using one with an angle here, uh, just to give me a better angle at them. 
And we're just going to go up underneath and get on those three quarters. Okay, so here's why you're replacing the bolts, but also why they suck is it's got a threaded shaft that goes in there and then you've got your bushings and this goes on top and then you've got the nut. So in order to use these again, we would have to take out the shaft and then put it in the bottom of the thrashing uh, risers, which I don't know, I think it would be kind of a pain and this would get all gouged up. So I didn't want to mess with it, I'd rather have just a single bolt. So these are the stock ones though. All right, so now we got those out. Now what we gotta do is get the stock bushings out. You could leave these in there and use them, but I wouldn't. So I'm gonna just see if I can take a socket and pop it down. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do now is we're gonna change out this brake cable. So do you remember I just left the whole assembly hanging down here because I didn't want to mess with it until I got the bike up and some other things done, right? So what you need to do is you've got a 14 millimeter bolt here that comes off of the master cylinder and then you've got a 10 millimeter bolt up front underneath the headlight area, the forks on the bottom of the triple tree that connects to the brake block, right? So. The difference between the cables is obviously a little bit longer, but also here's why you need this adapter because the new cable is straight where the other cable is a little bit angled that came stuck, right? So we've got this kind of started loose. So when we put that on the other side that it's there and then we'll just get it all in place kind of loosely so I can manipulate it and do what I need to do when I get it up ready to mount it up on the bars, right? So won't do any fluid or anything. We're just going to get it mounted and ready to go. And then I'll tighten it all up once I get the bars and everything, you know, where I want it. And we can adjust it off the end of this thing here. So in the kit comes with two new little brass washers. So you want to put one on each side of the connector here, you'll see them on the existing one, so just put it back the way that it was. And um, yeah, should be pretty easy, all right? We've already got a drain, so let's get to it. Okay, so we took the 90 degree angle off of the cable and just got that started up in here. It takes a little finagling to get it started. You kind of got to grab it like so, which I'm blocking the camera, but Got to kind of grab it like so to get it to where you want it to go and you just snug it down finger tight and still allow that movement. And then we take the new cable, and we'll run this guy up here and we'll connect it to the end here. Again, just finger tight, make sure you don't cross thread it. Now this is loose so you can move it around as you need to when you start routing it. So that part's attached. And then now we'll move over to the master cylinder side and uh, get that connected. Okay, so now we're ready to take this off. And let me tell you, this sucker is on there. So I had to take it over into my vise and pad it up real good to get it to break loose right here on this 14 millimeter. But that sucker's on there really well. So we'll just take this guy off. There's one of your washers. Here's the other washer. They look like they're in good shape, but they gave us new ones. So I'm gonna use the new ones. There's your old brake cable. Just gonna clean up a little bit right here. So there's your master cylinder taken off, right? This will go on just like the other one done with the brass and the brass on either side, right? I'm going to leave this loose because we'll be flipping it around, doing the cable run and everything else when we start mounting it, right? So I don't want to have it, you know, bind up or jam or anything like that. 
So we've got now we've got the longer cable on with the new fittings. And then once we get attached, we'll tighten up everything in both spots. All right, now that we got the brake cable done, now we're gonna reattach the upper clutch cable. So I kind of wanted to show a little bit different way this one came. Um, this has a little stopper right here that holds this in place so that the cable doesn't slide up and lose it. And if you notice, this has the whole piece all the way down here, right? So we got to take this part off and then we'll slide this part over it and it should be good to go. The way you get this little guy off is there's these two little clips right here, one on this side and one on that side and you can try to do it with just one but I'm going to use two screwdrivers just to pry this thing out and get it to lift up so you can do it at the same time and then just pull the whole piece out right so we'll just pop this guy down snaps in place just like that and you've got your new piece right so what this little stopper does, at least when I figured out, is it stops the cable from sliding up and down while you're trying to do stuff, right? So we kind of needed to do that so that we can get this ball back in this groove and bend that tab back down. So we're gonna pull this little guy off and slide that cable down and trap it, right? So now that's trapped in there. And then we just gotta take and push down this little brass tab. Push this tab down. And that stops that from letting that ball come out of there, right? And we're just gonna slide this tube down just like that for when we get ready to attach everything. All right, so now that we got the risers off, I thought we'd come over and do some prep work for some of these things. We wanna mock up the new risers and clamp and then also the gauge because I'm doing the gauge relocation and then I'm just wanted to show you you know the stock one and what you may have to do if you aren't doing the gauge relocation for those kind of things so these are the stock bolts that come in with the Harley Davidson risers and you can see the bolt that I purchased is pretty much the same length right there. I've got the Loctite all ready to go. So you've got the new top clamp, you've got the relocation uh, mount that goes underneath on this part of the riser. Make sure when if you're doing what I'm doing that you have this threaded riser top that goes right there for that. Uh, tools you're going to need, of course, three-quarter wrench for the riser bolts and then for this little guy and this little guy here, these are ARP bolts with a 5 16 head, 12 point, and then you're gonna need a wrench to hold to tighten it up. Same thing for here. And then on the clamp, it's a 3 8 12 point. And then for the bolts to go up inside of there, it's a 3 16 hex bit. And then over on this side with the gauge relocation, with the purchase gauge that I did, you've got these little screws that go on the bottom, which is 330 seconds. So it's a very small little hex head that goes in there. And then of course you got the gauge, you've got the seal, which I've already put on here. They recommend to lube it when you put it all in. We'll see how that goes so you don't tear it. And then you've got the, the base of it, I've already got the cable run in, and you can see if you look at the original clamp, or the uh, original speedo wire and the new speedo wire, everything looks good, matches up real nice. So that's great, and then you got the top piece here that goes over as you build it all in. Now if you're doing the thrashing clamp without doing this gauge, you've got screws in here that you need to take out to push out that um, gauge here to put in the new one right and then of course your cable comes out and your new one goes in all right so first thing I'm gonna work on I think is I'm gonna mock up the um, risers so all I'm really gonna do with it is just kinda get them where they're gonna go so you can see you got thrash in here 
right? All that like that. These are gonna sit like this on the bike, right? So the reason why you wanna mock these up is because when you mount it, you want it to be able to be square, right? So I'm not gonna put any Loctite on them right now because I'm gonna take them back out and put them in. Alright, so those are mocked up, ready to go for that. We'll set that aside. Okay, so now we're going to work on the gauge and get this set up. So you can see Thrashing gives you the instructions. They also put a part number for a gauge that you can get. Uh, I got a little different model, but mine should still work. And you put the gauge, the seal, this little trim piece, and then it goes into the cup here and puts in. So you've got this little rubber grommet that goes in there that you got to slide in. Just make sure it's all flush and lined up here on the inside so it gives it that seal for weather protection. So once you get the seal around the gauge, they recommend you lube it up so that it doesn't tear and let you um, slide it inside this adapter here for that. So what I use is I just use a very light coat of dielectric grease just because it's clear and seems to work pretty well for that. Let's see how well it goes in. So you get your gauge lined up and then try to see if we can get it up and in. Very nice. Goes right in when you do that. So you can see it's all flushed around there so the, the rubber doesn't stick to that metal. So we're just going to make sure this is seated down good. All right, so now next stage, if you look there, is to go in and put it inside the cup here. And here's your connector. The notch is on the gauge side, so you want to have that turned up. Should snap in just fine. No issues. And then the tricky part is going to be getting these little washers they've got in there lined up for that, right? So and now your gauge is ready to go. All right, so now that I got that done, now what I'm going to do is put the bars on here and uh, get the wires out and get the new bars wired up. So back in a second. All right, so now that we got the risers all prepped, now we're going to work on doing the bars. Um, what I like to do with these is I usually like to just tape these up with some blue tape just to minimize any drag. Uh, real quick here, we're just going to take off these T25s for the upper switch housing. So we're going to start with the uh, single side just because it's easier and move these over and just start feeding this through. And then the same thing for this side, we're just going to work them through and this one's best generally to push them both through. What I want to do is I want to show the difference between the thrashing bars and the stock bars for that riding position. All right, so here's the thrashing bars versus the stock bars. You can already see the difference in the bends. This comes way up here, and these thrashing bars are really light compared to these guys. These are pretty heavy. All right, so now we're going to start putting our switches and stuff back on. All 
Make sure you got these little rubber seals around there that they didn't come off. That's another reason why I tape them. All right, so now you got your wires free. They're in there pulled. Everything looks good. Check your connectors. Make sure nothing got damaged or whatever as you go through. And then we're gonna go through now and connect our cable extensions, so. So there's that and that, and you have your bars wired, extensions on, and ready to get everything put back together. All right, so now we've got the good and tight uh, inserts in here, the new bushings, and all you really need to do is lube those things up like I talked about before. I just used a towel and a rubber mallet just to tap it down. The lube really helps go in there and then pushed it in the bottom as far as I could get it. And then when I put the uh, risers and clamp on and gauge to mock it up, as you can see, uh, I just bolted it up from the bottom and let it squish it together and it pulled it in real nice. I did have to raise the front of the bike to be able to turn the wheel uh, so that I could get the bolts in there because they hit the fairing mount for the frame. So no big deal there, just took a couple seconds and uh, I have it in there and it's still on the rack so I can move it up and down if I need. But I've got this all mocked up, ready to go. It's tightened down. I've got my gauge where I think I want it. You can kind of see how it looks here. We'll get a better view when it's uh, on the, the seats all on there, we're sitting on the bike. And then here's my gauge wire. And then we're gonna put the bars on there and just kind of get them close to where we want them to be. And then we'll start working on getting those connections going for the handlebars and all that stuff. And then we'll dress up the wires in the back with uh, loom wrap and stuff like that to make it look all pretty. And then we'll figure out what's next after that. All right, so now we're gonna put the bars on. So we're gonna align these in the center based on the gnarl marks. As best we can get a pitch kind of where we think we don't want to tighten it down too tight because we're gonna have to adjust it and then you put the top clamp on and start your bolts make sure you now you want your Loctite on them because they're gonna get cinched down all right so I got them loose so I can still move them I wanted to get them close before I put the pressure on them so I don't scar up the bars. All right, so now we got the controls all back on. Perch clamps, right? They're in there in place, cables are run. And uh, everything's kind of loose a little bit. I can still adjust them, just cause I don't want to tighten it all down until I get everything back together and then we'll get the final rider position. Uh, I've got the loom guard here that I'm gonna use to bundle these wires up once I put the gauge back on. And then from that point, we'll bleed the brakes and uh, get that squared away and then start Button it back together. So on to the next thing. Okay, so now we're ready to bleed the brake. So take off your master cylinder cover. I like to level the bars out or level the cylinder out just so it doesn't tilt or anything like that. And we're gonna reconnect our little cool um, four uncles suction here that goes with it. I've got the tube connected to it. I've got the tank down here. And then now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start the suction and then we're going to crack it open and suck the fluid down until we don't see any more bubbles on this side. Meanwhile, while you're doing this, you've got to pay attention to your master cylinder so you don't suck air back in it and do everything all over. So let's see what happens. All right, so we got the brakes bled, got the master cylinder cover back on, check the system for leaks, and uh, we'll kind of watch it and see what happens as I continue to do the other stuff. And when I take it out on a test ride, 
and do all that kind of stuff just to make sure uh, I don't have any leaks that I may have missed or if it works in or something. So, so far brakes feel real good. All right, so now we got everything put back in place. We've got all these parts on, we've got the gauge reinstalled. We've got the wires all connected down here in this boot and got them put back in. Let me tell you, definite lifesaver by pulling these guys off to get that thing tucked in there and get those wires bundled in. I used a wire loom to go down here and put down to clean it up to make it look real good. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to put the tank back on, the seat, get it all connected, and then turn the switch on and let this gauge acclimate to the bike. So what it says you do, all your mileage and everything else is stored in the ECM. So when you put this guy on, it'll turn on, it'll sync, it should adopt the mileage and the whole nine yards. We're gonna get it all assembled back together, sit on it, show riding position, and then we're gonna crank this thing on and see what it looks like now with the gauge relocation from the bar clamp and up here to this front one with uh, the new thrashing bar. So. All right, so now we're gonna power on the new gauge. One thing to note is I did run into an issue with the initial gauge that I bought. I bought it when thrashing parts all first came out for this, for the gauge relocation and everything like that. And according to their video, it said, oh, it'll work with most uh, four inch uh, gauges. So went and found what I thought was close, but what I later found out, thanks to the great folks over at Gorilla Cables, is I was getting some errors popping up on the gauge that I had put on, uh, low range and check engine light and wouldn't show my fuel, wouldn't go into setup, things like that. So after talking to those guys, Jose was awesome in helping me out. We realized that the gauge that I had was a five wire gauge and the one that I needed for the Lowrider ST is a four wire gauge that was getting errors because of that. So. Had to order a new gauge, no big deal. Got that in pretty fast from Harley. I'll put the link of the correct gauge in there and this is the one that's on there. And also in the paperwork of thrash in, which I didn't have when I ordered the gauge yet, uh, it tells about the you know model number, which we'll cover and I'll show that in the link as well, that you need. And if you get that one, the only difference is there's a dash C supersede gauge in there that you gotta get <clears throat> that, um, works just fine. So we got it in now and we're gonna turn it on here for the first time and take a look at what it looks like. So I dimmed the lights all down and everything else and got it zoomed in here so we can take a look and see. You can see that my mileage came over fine. My gauge is working great. Uh, turn signals are working fine. Hazard lights are working fine. So everything seems to be good. Pretty impressed with the way it looks. I think it looks very clean. And then we'll show you what it looks like from right behind the bars. So here you go. And uh, let's take it on a ride. Back in a minute. All right, so now you can see we're up and running. Gauge is working great. Got turn signals working good. Hazards working good. Gear indicators working. My mileage is going up on, you know, where it mapped over and everything looks good there. Fuel gauge is reading, don't have any ABS lights, no check engine lights, everything's just pairing up nicely. So definitely the gauge to get to work with it. Looks real good, looks sleek, I like the position. And uh, gotta say, pretty, pretty uh, happy with it overall. And uh, now we're just gonna kind of run it around a little bit and get some speed on it and see how it handles. I love the new rider position. It's a lot more comfortable on my arms and my back, and uh, I enjoy it. All right, so now we got it adjusted. 
hopefully with the same angle. I'll show a picture of the previous one here. But now we got it adjusted with the new bars and risers and gauge relocation. And you can already see that the profile of the bike looks much better. Really enjoy that. If I go put my arms up, you can see that my arms are pretty much straight out now, where before they were down like this, right? Additionally, my back is now in the notch of the seat, so I'm, my tailbone is right up against the backrest, and my arms are comfortable like this. I don't feel any pressure on my tailbone. I don't feel any pressure on my lower back. I don't feel any pulling on my shoulders. It just, it just feels really good. I really enjoy this position, very happy with it. So all I gotta do now is um, get everything all adjusted for me fine tune it and then uh, we'll do some closing thoughts. All right, back in a minute. All right guys, there you have it. So overall, pretty easy install to do by yourself. You may have to manipulate a few things, uh, you know, cause you only got one set of hands, but we've got the Thrashen gauge relocation kit on here. We've got the Lowrider S gauge. So make sure you get that one and I'll have the link to this one in there. The other one, like I said, didn't work. Had some issues, five wire versus four wire. That's what I get for buying it before the parts come in to see the actual part numbers. But hey, that's why we do these videos is so we can learn together and not make the same mistakes, right? But did all that, got the new grips on it, got the risers, got the clamp, um, got the new levers on it, did the, the longer clutch cable, did the longer brake cable and uh, loomed it all up real nice and very happy with it as you saw from the video no wobble no fluctuation nice and sturdy great riding position and very pleased with it so another great line of products by thrashen and hats off again to the guys over at gorilla cables they took my call called me back and explained things so i can make sure i got the right parts great quality products for them as well and uh, definitely check them out if you need anything so there you have it. Like, subscribe, give any feedback or comments. You know I like them all. Uh, be good humans, and we'll see you on the next one. Take care.